Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this morning. Uh, my name is Sheila Saval. I am the STEM coordinator. And with me is Bonnie O'Regan, who is our out facilitator, our middle school principals, Gordon Beinstein, Tom Healy, and Jason Goldstein, our world language oh, and first coordinator, Adrian Hirsch Klein, our middle school instructional coach, Jen Bressler. Next slide, Bonnie. So we have two goals today. We want to um, understand what the placement process is for our stu advanced studies courses in the middle school. And we want to take a look and explore the timeline for this year. Bonnie, next slide. So we want to make sure that we appropriately place all students. So to that end, our process is ongoing and very fluid. Each core course has very specific requirements and we'll take a look at those and each course is different. So the first uh, courses we're gonna talk about will be middle school mathematics. We have three programs in middle school math. The first is our core program and that begins with grade six core on grade level, grade seven core and those students who stay in that program are on track to take pre-algebra in eighth grade and algebra one in high school. We have an accelerated program. They'll start out with 6A. They'll do pre-algebra in grade seven, algebra one in grade eight, and geometry in high school. And then our, our advanced program, we have pre-algebra in grade six, algebra one in grade seven, geometry in grade eight, and algebra two in high school. In addition, we had another option this past year. We offered both geometry and algebra one in summer school this year for students who wanted to accelerate. We expect to offer that option again this year. And it's important to note that although we have these different programs, students can move in and out of these programs along the way. And middle school principals can speak to that specifically if you have any questions. If you have any questions today, if you could put them in the chat so we could um, answer those, that would be great. Next slide, Bonnie. We had a lot of parent and teacher feedback this year. So we have been really responsive to that. And because of that, we've made changes to the math and science placement. Parent input, the building advisory committee discussion and student work are of increased importance this year for placement. The STAR math assessment will be considered, but its importance is decreased. So those are two very important changes that we've made this year. Grade five achievement, we're gonna consider the entire year, all student work, performance tasks, unit assessments, and teacher recommendation. The parent input this year, we're asking parents to fill out a form. And on that form would be any additional information that you feel we need to know about your student that we could use in our discussion as we are placing your student. We'll talk a little bit about that later. The winter administration of the math and reading star will be used for placement for grade six math and science. Again, it's of decreased importance this year. The student work, parent input and teacher recommendations are much more important this year. The assessments will be uh, administered during class instructional time. So there it's not before or after school. This, these are important dates that we have to remember. So I'm gonna leave the slide up for a minute. The STAR administration window begins today and it ends February 4th. The second line is the parent input form. Those forms will be available online for you to fill out starting February 1st, which is next Monday. They must be submitted by the 26th of February. If you are uncomfortable online, please contact your school and they'll be able to print one out for you. The building advisory committees will take place between March 8 and 19, 2021. And the placement recommendations will be emailed to you beginning on March 26th. So we'll just leave this up for a minute so that you can take these dates down. We will post this presentation up on the district website after we do the evening presentation. So you can go back and refer to it. We will also have a translation for this available. OK, 
Okay, Bonnie, next slide. We do have our regular summer school options. If you, your student is not placed in the course that you would like them to be in, you have the option of enrolling them in a bridge course. The bridge course happens during normal summer school hours. The placement test at the end of the bridge courses will be given this year on July 30th. And new last summer, Algebra 1 and Geometry will be offered for students who want to accelerate in middle school math. These courses also will happen during normal summer school hours. The course itself is a two and a half hour class. And in the afternoon, we can expect between one to two hours additional work and office hours with the teacher. Registration instructions are posted on the district website. They usually are posted at the end of March or the beginning of April. So those are important times to look for that. Advanced science is based upon the NGSS middle school performance standards. What makes that course very different than the core course is the extension activities that are in, written into the curriculum. They are of increased rigor. The expectations for those students are higher and the research component of that course is significant. All fifth grade students will have the opportunity to opt in. Again, there is a comprehensive review of student work, science notebook, parent input, and also teacher recommendation. In the science notebook, you have to have a minimum average of a three. And we do consider reading star uh, scores, but again, not to the extent that we have in the past. Parent input, student work, and teacher recommendation will have much more weight this year. As I said before, this is the criteria, teacher recommendation, parent input, and a cumulative review of student work for students who wish to enter advanced science in grade seven or grade eight. Sorry, I was having trouble finding my microphone to unmute. <laughs> We also offer two levels of language arts in the middle school. The ALP language arts is a greater depth in differentiation. It's accelerated um, and an advanced place, um, pace of learning. Uh, for placements for these, the placements are in addition to what you're doing in the, in the class. You will be getting um, screening letters later on this evening or first thing tomorrow morning um, we look at the star um, for for screening measure for screening, but then parents can also refer um, refer their child for additional the additional tests, which are the cognitive abilities test, the NWA reading assessment, and a performance task. All that is happening right after when we get back from February break um, with the placement recommendations going out at the end of March, along with the math and the science. Hi, everyone. Uh, now we'll talk about the offerings in world language at the middle school level. Um, currently, your fifth grader um, receives Spanish or French if they're enrolled in French at Julian Curtis about 90 to 100 minutes per week where they stay in their homeroom and an elementary school world language teacher visits them in the homeroom. At the middle school level, um, Spanish or French is um, built into their schedule as an academic period. Um, so um, if <clears throat> at, the, at the MS level, we offer three tracks of Spanish and uh, we also offer French. So we offer um, on-level uh, Spanish, Spanish that is taught in an accelerated track, as well as native language Spanish for those students um, whose native language is Spanish. And um, for French, we offer beginning French um, at the three middle schools 
And at Central Middle School, we also offer advanced French because um, students from Julian Curtis who have taken French for several years um, feed into Central Middle School. Um, and then once you move to high school, the world opens up for you. In addition to Spanish and French, we offer five other languages from which your child can choose when that time comes. And there is a placement process for that. Bonnie, next slide, please. The um, middle school placement is based on a few criteria um, that teachers look at in your child's fifth grade year. Um, the Apple, interpersonal listening speaking assessment. It is a, um, it's an interview in Spanish that is given online in late March to all fifth graders in Spanish and French. Um, that score is factored into a placement recommendation as is a one page reading writing um, assessment as well as the average of the fifth grade unit tests. Fifth graders take about four unit tests in um, in their current fifth grade year. Um, the average of the first three tests is factored into um, a decision as to whether they um, would be more successful in the advanced or on-level track. Um, and finally, the teacher recommendation carries a lot of weight in making this recommendation. Please keep in mind that uh, you're child's current French or Spanish teacher has had them for at least three, if not six years, if they're enrolled in, a, in one of the magnet schools where world language instruction starts in kindergarten. So the teacher recommendation also carries a lot of weight. So all students new to our district will participate in a placement process to determine what their appropriate placement will be in both math and science. And if you have participated in a gifted program in another school district that does not automatically qualify for you for placement in out courses, um, Bonnie can answer any questions about that. If you do have any information from uh, another gifted program, all you need to do is email me that information and then we will talk with I'll talk with you on an individual basis. This is the math sequence. This is the standard sequence. And as I had mentioned earlier in the presentation, there are ways to move in and out of the various levels, but this is just a thumbnail sketch of what you can look for in high school. And you can see that once you get to high school, the course choice is pretty comprehensive. This is the language arts course sequence. And again, you can see that there are many choices here as well. Here are some resources that are available to both students, teachers, and parents. The Common Core Standards can be accessed online. They're also linked in the curriculum page. Smarter Balance Release Items in Math, ELA, and Science and interim assessments are available on the Connecticut um, Education website. If you have questions after this presentation about placement, here's the contact list for middle school math and science. I am the contact for that. For middle school ALP language arts and seminar placement, Bonnie O'Regan is the contact. For middle school world language and ESL and bilingual placement, Adrian Hirsch Klein is the, the contact for that. The high school mathematics administrator is Andrew Byrne. He's the Folsom House Administrator at Greenwich High School. And if you have high school science questions, John DeLuca is the science program administrator at Greenwich High School. And we have a number of questions, so uh, we'll open the chat and start to consider those. Uh, the Q&A is, you type into the chat, um, the fifth grade form will be available online to parents on Monday, February 1st. We are meeting today with our district data manager to finalize instructions for administering the STAR uh, for children in quarantine and children in our remote school. 
Uh, the next question says, is this for only sixth grade? So whoever asked that, if you could clarify that question and we'll answer it for you, we're not sure what you're referring to. The STAR administration window ends on February 1st. We will have STAR information for the building advisory committee meetings. I'm not sure when the reports will be sent home. I can check with our district data manager to see when that happens. We'll, um, link it will link it assessments be taken into consideration for student placement or not this year? The test that, and I, again, I'm speaking for math and science, so Bonnie and Adrian can speak for their content areas. The assessments that are gonna be considered for math and science are unit assessments, the STAR assessments. Those are the only ones. The Lincoln assessments are not going to be considered. Bonnie and Adrian, do you wanna weigh in? Uh, for world language, we have four unit tests that are given to fifth grade in addition to an online um, Spanish or French interview. Um, there is a brief reading writing assessment that we will give in Linkit, but it is a it is a custom made test. It's not a test that Linkit Linkit creates. It's a test that um, that I've created. Um, we're just using Linkit as um, a mechanism for delivering uh, that for administering that test in March. For uh, all, we will not be using the Linkit assessments. Will STAR test results from the winter assessment be available before the parent form is due? Um, someone else had asked that question. I will follow up and get that answer back to you. The plan is for summer school to occur in person as it has been previously. That decision has not been made yet. Um, that will be made in the spring sometime. Can a fifth grade student get algebra eighth in sixth grade? Um, Whoever asked this question, if you could contact me offline directly and we can have a conversation about your specific circumstances. There is concern that given remote learning last year, students are still catching up. Parents have been asking to push off the STAR assessment for placement later in the year around March instead of January. Has this been considered? Um, Gordon, do you want to weigh in on this question? since uh, middle school principals sure. uh, um, timeline? Yeah, the, the timeline is, is somewhat dependent on scheduling, but we're also recognize that there's a gap um, from what occurred last spring and even this year. So we are looking at, I think that's why we're de-emphasizing the star score, looking more at student performance in the classroom. And then we're also gonna look at the numbers. If we have to lower the numbers a little bit, we'll lower the numbers a little bit. So I think the star will give us some information regardless if we give it now or in March, uh, but I think we'll be well prepared. Is there an alternative timeline for ALP language arts if we go remote after break? Um, that is something else that we we're talking about today as we look at whether or not um, we are going to go remote and what the impact is going to be on the, um, the way that we have to give the assessments. Hi, it's Francis representing the remote learners. For girls, Oh, wait a minute, just lost that question. For girls grade K to five remote learners, who is the BAC? Is the BAC the neighborhood school team plus the remote teacher? Yes, generally the BAC team is any teacher who has contact with that student and who can contribute data that, which will help us make our decision. Are all students required to take a language in middle school? So all students are expected to take a world language in middle school. However, there are cases where a student's IEP or 504 might preclude them from taking a world language because their IEP indicates the need for a reading intervention. So we look at that on a case-by-case -case basis at the middle school level. What is the placement process for math, science, or language arts for someone who is already in middle school, i.e. a seventh grader? Gordon, would you like to take that one? Or I can give it to one of my colleagues, Mr. Healy or Mr. Goldstein. I'm happy to speak up. Um, so uh, since we've had students at this point, you know, for the entirety of sixth grade, you have a team of teachers around that student who have a pretty good handle on how they've been doing all year long in the various assessments, assessments, benchmarks, et cetera. And so generally speaking, that, that team of teachers in conjunction with the student's counselor 
at the middle school level in sixth grade, sort of rate, make the recommendations for the student moving forward into seventh grade. Obviously, parent input uh, along the way is valued, and those conversations happen generally pretty fluidly throughout the year if necessary. Are Lincoln assessments used in the context of advanced placement or are those strictly for internal use at the school or grade level? We will not be using uh, Lincoln assessments for placement this year. What is Folsom House? It's one of the houses at the high school um, for students. Will you be administering a map science test? We not for placement, at least for uh, general ed placement, we will not be. We will at the elementary for, for grades three, four, and five science placement, but not for middle school placement. What are the science offerings in middle school and sequence? We have two levels of science. We have core science six, seven, and eight, and we have advanced science six, seven, and eight. Can a student start French in middle school, sixth grade after doing Spanish in school until fifth grade? Yes, absolutely. French is offered at the beginning level at all three middle schools. Uh, your current, your child's current world language teacher will be sending, will be emailing a letter home in March asking whether your child would like to continue in Spanish or switch to French. So please be on the lookout for more information later in March. Will the students in the remote school BAC be with their home school and or the remote school? They'll be with both. Again, any teacher who contacts and helps and supports the student, we will ask them for input in that meeting. Our students, our students from Glenville who have only been taking Spanish able to switch to French in the middle school? Yes. Where can I find information about the process to enter a magnet middle school out of our resident zone? That's um, that's me, because we're the only magnet middle school. Um, that's all online. If you go to the, the town website and just type in uh, magnet schools, you'll see the whole process there. The initial application is due on the 5th of February. If you're at all interested, I would, I would encourage you to apply. You can always withdraw later or not accept if, if you're uh, selected. What is the science notebooks assessment you refer to? When will this be administered? It is not an assessment. It's a continuous grading process. So any data that students enter into that are assessed. So it's just an ongoing, one of the grades in the student's um, grade. Would the summer program be available remotely? I'm not really sure those decisions haven't been made yet. When they are made, they will be communicated to parents. Are both math and reading star assessments used for math placement or just math? Both math and reading are used because we are always concerned about vocabulary. But again, these exams have decreased importance this year. Do all parents need to fill out the online form, even students who are in elementary ALP? For to be considered for middle school ALP language arts, if you're already in the ALP cohort, you will, I will be doing that assessment for you automatically. But we would love you have your input if you, um, to fill out the form. Is French only available to students who have been studying in elementary school? So, it's difficult to switch from French to Spanish at the middle school level only because the Spanish um, either on level or accelerated track is a continuation of foundational Spanish that children have learned either since kindergarten or third grade, depending on which elementary school they're coming from. In the past, some of our middle schools have been able to offer an intro to Spanish class, but that really is depending on the budget and I don't believe there are plans to offer an intro to Spanish class this year due to budgetary constraints. The, some of my principal colleagues could correct me if I'm, um, if I'm wrong. 
In elementary school, I have heard that students need to be two grade levels advanced to be an ALP. Is two years advanced the same approach for middle school? The assessments that the students will be taking for ALP language art, arts are two levels above, and the students should be, um, for the placement, they should be working on um, at the 50th percentile, two grade levels above. Will there be a remote option for the summer school offerings? Again, we have not made that decision yet. That will be made later in the spring. Are there any other advanced French language options beyond level one and two in middle school? Uh, advanced French is offered at Central Middle School. Um, it, it's particular, those classes are particularly populated with students who um, took French at Julian Curtis and or um, who, um, whose heritage language may be French. Um, but level two French, either at the accelerated or the on-level track is the highest level offered at the middle school. If students start French in sixth grade, is it possible for the student to take AP French at the high school, which year? Yes, that is possible. Um, it is possible to take AP French. Um, high school teachers work closely with students. Um, students are sometimes able to skip a language level and or do catch up work in the summer in order to reach AP French. Many of our students can do that. How will Central Middle School Advanced Science Placement be handled for seventh grade since core and advanced science courses were combined for sixth? Uh, I guess I'll jump in there. Uh, the middle school science program was uh, delivered the same way at all three middle schools this year based on the cohorting system. So we are continuing to, um, you know, follow the same process in terms of identifying students who are prepared for that uh, more in-depth, uh, rigorous exploration of the NGSS standards. So uh, as we look at our schedule for next year, those decisions will be made as they have been in the past. It's just uh, all dependent upon um, the cohorting needs and the mitigation strategies for the pandemic that have changed how the scheduling was done in this particular year. Can you add more foreign language choices other than French and Spanish in the middle schools? How many students take French classes? Our French program is very robust. We are classes um, in French are as full as they are in Spanish. Um, the program continues to grow. In terms of adding additional languages at the middle school level, this question is often asked and the response has been and continues to be that because of the tight budget climate we're in, we currently have no plans to offer a third language at the middle school level. What test results will be considered for reading ALP for fifth graders? We will look at the verbal standard age score on the cognitive abilities test, the math reading um, RIT score, and the score on the student's performance assessment. Is there a specific course for native Spanish speakers? Yes, there is a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade Spanish native course. And if your student is still interested in pursuing that in high school, there's a sequence of native courses in high school that ultimately culminates in an AP Spanish native class. What level COGAT will you be administering? We will be giving the level 1314 COGAT. Will you administer the quantitative COGAT in addition to the verbal? No, we will only do the verbal. Can you explain a little more about the bridge program? The bridge program is designed to give students who didn't get into the course that they wanted to get into the opportunity to take a course during summer school, have a minimum grade on the placement exam and be enrolled in the next higher course. For grade six students, the bridge course that is open to you is the bridge to 6A. So if you're placed in course six and you wish to try and get into 6A, you can take that course in summer school, or you can just register to take the placement test. 
The placement test is given on July 30th. The minimum score on the placement test is an 85%. So students who get 85 or above then will be placed in 6A at the middle school. How are students in math ALP, but also cohorted into ALP ELA cohort during this pandemic be evaluated for sixth grade? We will be evaluating them for placement into the ALP ELA um, for middle school. And the same as any other students that are referred. My seventh grader is taking science 7A. Is this the advanced science or the regular science? Science 7A is advanced science for seventh grade. Do STAR assessments test any concepts that have only been introduced at the ALP level? <coughs> Bonnie, do you wanna weigh in on that? Sure, the STAR assessments are, um, are adaptive. And so students are, the way that it is constructed is the students are going to be given information or questions that they have not been introduced to. They're not, it is not concept driven as far as the, it's not content driven as far as it's not a content assessment based upon what they have actually been learning in school. Will the math ALP students in fifth grade be automatically enrolled in math ALP in the middle school? No, they will be going through the same, um, the same process in, during the BAC um, process and being uh, recommended for math 6A, math 6, math 6A, or pre-algebra. If a student has been placed in advanced math, can they attend the bridge program? No, currently we do not have that option for them. However, every summer we do have summer work for students who are entering all math courses in the middle school. So your student can complete that. Is there a fee for the summer bridge program? Yes, there is. That fee has not been set yet for this year. Can students take the placement test for math without taking the courses from the bridge program? Who do we contact to take the test? Yes, they can take the placement test without taking the bridge course. There is a registration option on the district website for students who wish to take the exam only. Is the map test on paper or on the iPad? Is it adaptive? How many grades does it go? The map test is adaptive and so it is given via um, a device on the iPad. It um, goes all the way through high school level content. So it, the students will be getting, in from getting questions that they have not previously been exposed to in school. How much more weight are parent and teacher recommendations given compared to previous years? In previous years, there was a matrix, but now it seems there's less structure. For math and science, we did not have a matrix or a point system. Um, the STAR test, the teacher recommendation and student work were of equal weight. This year, the STAR is much decreased. The parent input form and teacher recommendation and student work have much more weight than they have in the past. And this is the first year that we have asked for parent input information up front. Kids who are placed in Math 6A will go to Science A as well, or will they be placed separately? They will be placed separately. And again, um, summer school, we have not made decisions about whether or not it's gonna be remote or in person. Are there any more questions that parents have? Is there a summer bridge for pre-algebra or just for 6A? For grade six students, it's just for 6A. If again, if you have a specific situation, please contact me and we can have a discussion. Do we have to complete a separate parent form for each subject? Excellent question. Yes, you do. There's one for math and there's one for science. Will the Q&A be posted online? Uh, we can follow up and, and make sure that you have access to the, the questions. It seems there will be some tests in the next couple of weeks Colgate, STAR, MAP, NWA, what else? 
Um, there are some unit tests I know that will be given in the next couple of weeks in ELA and math, but they are staggered. So they will not occur at the same time. The COGAT, uh, MAP and WEA are the same test and the performance tasks are being given after February break. Um, STAR is done before. So just to confirm, do you encourage parents to submit the form for all subjects? Yes, we would really appreciate you giving us a completed parent input form that will help us in our BAC discussion. At what location will you be giving the tests of the students who are remote? Um, again, we're meeting today to finalize those directions. If a child gets into ALP but isn't a good fit, will they get retracked? Bonnie? Oh. Um, I'm going to let the, the middle school principals weigh in on this too, but it, for me, it's that it's been, I find the middle schools are very adaptive to meeting the needs of the students and that if students need to be placed into an out class, once they meet them or, and see what they're doing at the sixth grade level, um, they move them into it. And if the student, if it's not a good fit, the students are, are placed into the right level class. Yeah, I think uh, Jason touched on it before. Uh, I, can, I can say I speak for Gordon and Jason as well as we talk regularly. Um, you know, at the middle school level, we're constantly evaluating all of our students and making sure that they're being challenged at the appropriate level. So those are ongoing conversations with teachers, guidance counselors, parents, administration, district personnel, if, if appropriate. Um, and so, um, you know, we just want to keep the lines of communication open and making sure that the information that we're getting from students, uh, from the families and from the teachers are, are uh, evolving into conversations to make sure that students are being challenged at the right level for them, both from an academic standpoint, but also the social and emotional standpoint. Um, and that's just a, a consistent conversation through their three years in middle school. I can also just add to that. I mean, I know we're talking about placement and that fifth to sixth for, for most of the families that are probably streaming into this. and sometimes people start worrying about what, where they're gonna be in high school and what classes they're gonna take you know, six, seven years from now. And it's not like one decision is made here and then the rest of the path and trajectory is set. It's a constant adjustment, a constant evolving process. Everyone develops social, emotionally, cognitively at slightly different paces. And, and that's where we're constantly working with students and knowing the students and, and, and reflecting on what's working and not so that we can make appropriate decisions along the way. Uh, it's not a rush, it's not a race, it's, it's kind of meeting kids where they're at. So don't worry so much about getting stuck in, in that a track, so to speak, uh, and more about it's a starting point. It, it's, we try to do this placement to get the best fit to start, but even in the first few weeks, we're evaluating and assessing to see you know, if we need to make adjustments to do right by kids. Will we get input from a fifth grade Spanish teacher before the forms are due? So in terms of the paperwork in world language, you will be receiving um, an email, perhaps a Google form asking uh, your child if they'd like to stay in Spanish or switch to French. So we do that first. Um, a lot of our assessments are done in March um, that inform placement um, and your, PLUS teacher will be reaching out to you with a recommendation later in the spring. Um, if there is a concern about that recommendation, you're free to reach out to your PLUS teacher to discuss it once that recommendation is made later on in the spring in April or May. How much do the teacher's recommendation account for, test, et cetera? The teacher's recommendation, it has a lot of weight because they are with your student every day during the year and they know your student very well. The teacher recommendation, the student work and the parent input are of increased importance this year. The star is much less important than it has been in the past. Is the- I, Sheila, yes. sorry, it's Tom. Can I just jump in real quick? I, I, think, I think it's just important to also note um, that you know, the teacher recommendation is based on the student work. It's, it's based on the data and the evidence 
that the student is, is providing. So these conversations are in depth um, about uh, how a student is performing both on standard assessments, but really uh, on the curricular based assessments as well. So that's where the recommendation is, is coming from. It's always backed by what the student is showing um, from their performance in class. I'm a little concerned that administering the STAR test at home to quarantine fifth graders, parents may be tempted to help their children. How do we ensure fair and accurate scores? And we are finalizing that process today and we will be communicating that shortly. We do have processes in place to ensure that the test is fairly administered. If we are moving out of the area, can we get access to recommendations for placement into ALP to take with us to our new school? Thanks. Those are all emailed to you. So you have full access to the emails that I send out. I also noticed that there's another question about COGAD administered in beyond fifth grade. Um, we do not administer it to sixth or seventh graders. Are there any more questions? Well, thank you so much for attending this morning. If you have other questions that are specific to your student or specific to a content area, please feel free to contact us and we'd be glad to have a discussion with you. Thank you very much for attending this morning.